Hey, what's up everybody? T Tall Toby here, and in today's video, I'm going to record my qualification run for the upcoming CAD vs. CAD tournament, the World Championship 2025. Now, I'm gonna do this using Onshape, but if you are using a different CAD system, that's totally cool. You can enter using any 3D CAD system, and we've got a different video that kind of takes you through the step-by-step -step process of how to register and qualify for a tournament. So I'll include that link down below. The tournament is open to any CAD user, and you may wanna watch that video to understand kind of the logistics of how to use the website to register and how to qualify for the the tournament and submit your speed run but today what i'm going to do is i'm going to actually record my speed run using on shape so let's get into it here we're going to go to twotalltoby.com and we're going to create a free account and just as a quick reminder here when you create a free account you're going to have access to a limited number of challenges in our library and then if you're ready to unlock the entire library you can upgrade to our practice models premium membership and that will unlock over 200 3D CAD challenges. This is a great way to practice and increase your speed and your capabilities within your 3D CAD system. So once you create that free account, you can go here to tournaments and then you can go to the tournaments page. And on the tournaments page, you can see here it says qualify for free, click here. Now over time, we might change the way this box looks a little bit, but basically you're looking for the qualify for free, click here button. So I'm gonna click on that button and then we're gonna see here the leaderboard for the current tournament. So the current tournament is the World Championship. And we're gonna see here that you can click here for the 2025 drawings, the World Championship drawings. Now, what you do when you're trying to qualify for one of these tournaments is you model these one, two, three models. So you use these drawings here, drawing number one, drawing number two and drawing number three and you try to model all three of these and so what i like to do is i like to take these and just kind of drag them into their own window and then i can move that over onto a separate screen so you can see here now i've got a web browser with drawing number one drawing number two and drawing number three ready to go here so i'm just going to put that over on a separate screen now the other thing you want to do before you actually record your speed run is practice you know practice 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 that's going to get you uh into a good space to actually do your speed run in a pretty good time so in the case of uh, my practice here i've done some practice with this i'm using on shape what i've realized is that i could probably improve my workflow if i had my um that was 2025 world championship I could probably improve my workflow if I had a couple of things set up on my S key menu. So for example, when I'm working here in feature mode, there's gonna be a sheet metal model. It might be good for me to have the sheet metal flange command on my S key menu. And you can see I actually do have that flange command here. There's also times where I'm bringing up the sheet metal, um, just a general sheet metal model so maybe I could add that as well. So customize here, I could just add in that sheet metal model. And uh, also I may want to add the, um, the sheet metal uh, tab command. There's times when I'm using the tab command on that sheet metal model on the second model. So that would probably be useful. And then when I'm working in sketch mode, I think it'll be useful if I have the slot command on my sketch mode shortcut bar. So you can see that I've added it in here. The uh, slot command is on my S key menu. So I'm gonna say save shortcut cut toolbar settings and then I'm going to return to my model and then if I click refresh here I'll see that those changes have been added so now I've got sheet metal model and I've got the uh, flange command and I've got the tab command all waiting right here for me so you press the letter s you right click you go customize and that lets you set that up so that's definitely going to help me and then of course you got to make sure you've got your custom on shape materials set up to use the two tall toby materials so, okay, that's enough, I think, of our intro for this thing. Let's give this thing a go. So I'm going to say compete. And once we say compete here, you'll see that we've got the official timer for this tournament. And I'm just going to slide this timer over here like so, kind of put it over on the side of my screen. You do have to have the timer visible for the entire run. We want to be able to see that timer as you're going through your entire run. And that way we can make sure that you are actually modeling in real time not doing any time manipulation or anything like that. And then the other thing is you have to make sure that you go um, from one model to the next to the next without editing the video. So the video should be one continuous take, no edits, no time lapse, nothing like that as you're creating your models. All right, so before we get started, I'm just gonna jump over to my other view here so you guys can see all the cool keyboard shortcuts that I'm using and go. 
So this first one here, what we have to do is model up this part and we have to come up with this mass here, one, zero, five, two. So I'm gonna start out here on the top plane, S key, begin a sketch, S key line, single click here, move my mouse over, single click, let go of my mouse, one, two, zero, enter, and then S key slot, click on this line here, double click here on the slot shape, and this one is gonna be at 80. And then I'm just gonna do these one feature at a time for this model, so I'm gonna extrude that up to a height of 22. Now I'm going to begin another sketch on the top plane, S key, begin a line, so basically just kind of rinse and repeat, just with a smaller shape here. So this one's gonna come over to a distance of 40 and then I'm going to jump into the slot command click on this shape here the, or excuse me click on the line that one's going to be at 48 enter and then I can click on that line again and I can double click on this one and this one's going to be at 15 times 2 and there we go s key extrude and that shape is going to come up to a height of 30. and now i can click in this region right here s key extrude and i can just blast through with a remove so that's one of the things i really like about on shape i don't have to make a sketch there to get that that region so shift five to get back to the top view top plane s key begin a sketch s key circle single click here move over to here single click and s key extrude and that one is going to come up to a height of 60. enter enter and now what i could do is i could go to this face here s key begin a sketch s key circle just kind of rinse and repeat again here and this one is going to be at a diameter of 40 and s key extrude this one's going to be a remove and it's going to be a through wall remove and hit the green check mark. And now I could go to the right plane, S key, begin a sketch, N key to get normal too. And I could create just a center point rectangle here with the dimensions 24, enter, 10, enter. And then I can take this line and just make it coincident here. I made the midpoint coincident to that plane, so I'm all good there. And that's gonna be a remove through all symmetric. And now front plane, very similar workflow here. I'm gonna create a line. The line's gonna start here, come down like so. I'll take that line and make it coincident to this top edge here. I'll click on that line and create a slot. And that slot is gonna have a width here of 14. And then I'll create a final dimension here from this edge down to, whoops, missed the, missed the click there on the slot. 14, enter, it's having such a good run. And then this one's gonna go from this line down here to the arc and that's gonna be at 20. So now again, S key extrude. This is gonna be a remove through all and symmetric. Hit the green check mark. That should do it for that model. So I'm gonna assign the material. Make sure you assign the correct two tall Toby material. And then, uh, whoops, this one's 1060 aluminum. And then we're gonna click here on the mass, click here, and you have to make sure you show the correct mass. 1052, just like it's shown on the drawing. So click here when finished, and now I'm gonna move on to drawing number two. So for drawing number two, this one's gonna be a sheet metal model, and uh, we're gonna get into it here with some sheet metal features in Onshape. So I'm gonna make a new document. I'll just make this a new part studio. So create a new part studio here, and we'll go to the front plane, S key, begin a sketch, N key to get normal to. I'm gonna start with a rectangle here and get the overall width of 78 by the overall height of 35. And then I'm gonna exit that sketch and S key jump into sheet metal model mode. This is gonna be an extrude using this line and this line. Line, and that extrude is going to come out to a depth of 36, kind of like the front section of that sheet metal. The default wall thickness is four, the default bend radius is five, and that material should be going to the inside, and it is. So I'm going to hit the green check mark, pick this face, begin a sketch, end key to get normal two, create a rectangle. We'll make a rectangle here like so. These dimensions are base, best shown here in the top view. So 20, looks like it's 29 from this side, and it is 18 from the back. Uh, the back edge of that region. So 18 from that back edge. S key extrude, this is a remove, and we'll make this through all. And then we're gonna take this shape here and we're gonna make a tab that's kind of sticking out the back. So you pick that face, begin a sketch. And here's a little trick that I like to use. When I go to create this tab, I actually create it in this direction first, because that lets me pick up on that coincident down there and the coincident up here at the corner. And then I drag it out here to this back side. So then we can add in that dimension from the front to the back at a value of 60. And then we can exit that sketch and we can S key tab. There's tab and then just pick on that region and enter to finish. And now we can click on this edge, this edge here and S key and flange to bring that flange over. Now what you wanna remember uh, when you're doing a flange here is if you want the flange to line up perfectly with this region here, that's gonna be outer. 
So you change the flange alignment here to outer, and there you can see now it's matching up perfectly. Let's flip the direction of that flange, and then we'll put in that distance there of 27. And now for this lower region of the flange, if you inspect this drawing, what you'll realize is you can just make this lower region with a simple circle like this. So you can make that simple circle, exit that sketch, and then do another tab here, and then just pick on that region, and boom, you're done with that section. So now we just need to add a slot here to cut out this, this section here. So we'll wake up the center point, come up with a slot. That's gonna come up to 15, enter, and then we can S key slot, pick on this line, and that slot is going to have a width of 10. Okay, and enter, enter, and then we're gonna extrude that, and that's gonna be a remove through all. And so now we need to add some fillets and a chamfer. And one thing to remember about the fillets and chamfer is for the fillet, um, you can you can use the shift enter to chain your fillets together. So I'm gonna make this fillet here at 12 and then I'm gonna use shift enter. And that takes me right back into the fillet command and I can just tab down here to the radius and type in the radius of six. It makes it really easy. The other thing you can remember is you can window select here. And sometimes that's easier than zooming in or perfectly getting the uh, corner. And we can get that one corner that's kind of tucked away back there pretty easy. Easily. So we can kind of use that window select tool there to save some time. And then finally with the chamfer, we can also use the window select with the chamfer, which can sometimes be helpful. And then that one's going to have a chamfer distance of 25. So 25 on there, chamfer. Let's see here. It doesn't seem to want to let me use that. So when this happens with sheet metal, what I'll do is I'll just switch over here to the corner break, and that, that tends to kind of uh, resolve the issue. So just do it with a corner break instead, chamfer and 25. All right, and there we go. And whoops, this one of these fillets didn't work here for some reason. This fillet here it looked like it was working. Wow, this one wants me to do, huh? That's a little little bit of a bummer there. Um, it looks like it doesn't want to let me do this one either. It's interesting. I was this was uh, I, I felt like this was working in my um, in my previous run. I wonder if I just misselected something. Or, well, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to kill the time here. And, and really, if you're doing sheet metal, you should be using corner break anyway. So um, I'm just going to keep moving on here. This is kind of like when you're in a tournament, you have to just keep going. Uh, so we'll get these guys here using those windows again. Let's see if that works better. There we go. That worked better. So now we're going to do assigned material. And we're going to say here, this is going to be TTT custom material and plain carbon steel. Um, that that kind of hiccup there is because you can finalize your sheet metal model. Um, and that's a kind of a different topic, but you can see here the goal, the goal mass here is 124.1. We are getting 124.1. So we're going to finish that and we're going to move on to our final model in this challenge. So we're going to create another part studio. Now this one is in inches. So I'm going to start out by going up here to my workspace units and changing this to inch and changing this one to pounds. And this one is also a multi-body, uh, multi-body, multi-material example. So you can see here that we're creating this toolbox. This handle is 1060 aluminum. The rest is wood. Aside from that, this is a pretty straightforward model, but there are some kind of cool things you can do to save time. So I'm going to start out here by creating a line that comes over to the max width of eight over two, because I'm going to mirror the sketch at the end. I'm going to come up here to a distance of 5.5. .5. I'm going to come up at an angle here, kind of close this thing off, and then I'm going to start bringing a line down. I'm going to press Q for construction. And I'm going to bring that line down to a height of one inch. Now, the reason I'm doing that is because now I can window this whole thing and then do a sketch mirror. So just window that whole thing. And then here's your sketch mirror. And then once I've got that uh, geometry mirrored, I can go in and I can add in my final dimensions. So I can add in a dimension here to a distance of um, 10. And I can add an angle here at an angle value of 65 total. And then the other thing I can do is I can just real quickly drop a circle right here at that end point at one inch. So now I can take that geometry, I can extrude it, and that's going to go out to a distance of 18.25, and it's going to be mid-plane, so uh, symmetric. Choose symmetric there. And then I can do a shell command. So let's do a shell command here. I don't have that one on my uh, shortcut bar, so shell. And we're going to do a shell command here by uh, a wall thickness of 0 0.5. And we're going to remove this, this, this. And you don't have to, but you can also remove this. The reason I say you don't have to is because we're still going to blast a cut through there in a second. Because currently we've got kind of like a knife edge here at the top of this region. So we're going to cut that off by going to this face here, beginning a sketch and creating a simple rectangle. So I'll make a rectangle here that goes from that lower edge up to here up to about there i'll pick on this corner pick this point here i and then i'll just pick this edge and pick this uh, edge here i pick this line pick this edge s key extrude and that's going to go remove through all 
And there we go. That cuts those edges so that they're flat, so they're no longer a knife edge. And then I can show this original sketch again, and I can pick on the circle, and then S key extrude, and this is going to be a uh, solid here going out to a... Oops, pick this region. This is going to be a solid here going out to a depth of 18 point... 25 as well. I should have picked the region, not the uh, not the edge. This is going to be new because we want this out of a different material. And now we can take the main toolbox and we can say edit material or assign material. And this is going to go to the Two Tall Toby custom library of red oak. And then we can go to the handle and we can say assign material. And this is going to go to the Two Tall Toby custom library of 1060 alloy. And then take the mass properties of both of those. And we're coming up with a mass of 5.96. And that 5.96 is what's shown here on the drawing. So that is correct. And so we're going to stop that one. And there we go. 10 minutes and 39 seconds. So that is how you can go through and do your step-by-step -step speed run. Now, the thing is, when it comes to this step-by-step -step speed run, certainly you have the option of modeling things a little differently. Like if we were to go back to that very first model, you notice that I did one sketch extruded, one sketch extruded, one sketch extruded. Well, what you could do is you could include all this geometry, you know, all three of these, uh, the geometry from all three of these sketches in one single sketch. And then you could extrude and then re-extrude and re-extrude all from the same sketch. You could come up with a totally different workflow if you want. People come up with very creative workflows. That's the cool thing about being able to practice and practice and practice these speed runs. But the point is that now I've got myself a time here. Uh, I followed all the rules. I, you know, followed the rules with regards to keeping the clock shown. The whole video is all done in one take. So I'm going to say I have read, understand, and agreed to the tournament rules and submit this speed run. And now we see that our speed run is up here. Here. So mine is probably pretty low here. Yeah, mine's way down here. So our speed run is up here. And so what we do is we upload this video to YouTube and then we paste that link into our profile. Uh, there's another video that I mentioned at the beginning of this video. It's down in the description. And that really explains the step-by-step -step of how to actually submit your video. So I think that's where I'm going to end this video now. But I hope that you enjoyed this speed run. I hope that you learned some little tips and tricks on how to model some parts in Onshape. And be sure to hit the like button on this video and be sure to let me know down in the comments what you thought about this video.